If I'm looking for someone to provide me a solution, then they should have done it already before. If I want someone to come in and use me as their first time, I'll just do it myself. Hey, Channel Insiders, I'm your host, Katie Bavoso, and welcome back for part two of my interview with Echo Store Technologies and their customer, Eversource. If you haven't watched or listened to part one, head on over to channelinsider.com right now to catch up. In this half of the interview, we dig deeper into what makes this IT partnership work and what both parties would suggest to anyone out there looking for their own IT solution provider to partner with. Mark, I really, I really like to make sure that I pick your mind as the customer here, because I think it's so important that what you have, as far as experiences go with working with channel partners, you can use that to share and encourage other people out there who are just dipping their toe into the channel space and going, well, what is a solution provider and and what exactly do I need from them or what can I get? When you have somebody who is saying, I have never partnered with an outside solution provider before, what should I look for? What are some of the things that you would advise them? to immediately pick up on when they're searching for a partner like that? What dictates them going, this is the right fit for me and this is what we should do? Great question. Tough question. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But my my personal answer to that would be I always start with experience. Right. If I'm looking for someone to provide me a solution, then they should have done it already before. If I want someone to come in and use me as their first time, I'll just do it myself. So always looking for experience. And and we very often, especially in IT, t- in our personal IT, because we're not, you know, I'll say a Google or a Microsoft at bleeding edge of, of certain technologies. When we're doing a project, our typical response is we can't be the first ones to have done it this way, right? So who's done it this way before? What roadblocks have they hit? What was the most successful or efficient way of doing things? That's the value that you get out of a solution provider. 99 times out of 99, they should be coming back and saying, we've done it with customers X, Y, and Z. This is how we would do it for you. And that gives you the starting point and and gives you a much better head start than doing things yourself and, and experiencing issues that other people have come through before and you not being able to get through them as fast. Nick, same question to you. How would you build on that? Coming from the opposite side, being the partner here, what would you say to those end user businesses out there that are looking to be able to have what you and Mark have here and be able to have that together? It's really easy to be okay at what I do, you know, what my company does. I think there's a lot of that, right? It's very, very easy to have a relationship or, you know, find an opportunity and to work with an opportunity. I think it's all the things around the deal, I think, that are so critical. Uh, I mentioned before, understanding the organization and what happens around it. I think understanding what happens after your solution is done. And, you know, again, all the unsexy things are really, really foundational. And so I think people either get nervous or are in a hurry and don't ask either the tough questions or don't challenge things or don't take the time to learn all the little nuance. And I mean, listen, the nuance doesn't always impact something. But if someone's willing to learn the nuance of your business and willing to put in the time, I think that's a really good indicator as well, on top of what Mark just said. Yeah, for sure. I agree. And going just off of there, what's next for this relationship, this partnership between Eversource and Echo Store? I know that we spoke a little bit about that, Mark, and there are some things you can't give me the, all the information <laughs> quite yet. Just write it on the back of my bill when you send that to me, by the way. And I'll you got yeah, it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'll just... include it with the coupons. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. What's next for this this partnership? What are you working on next that you can speak to? Or what other areas of Eversource's business are you planning to bring Echo Store into? I'd love to expand more to kind of my my personal realm, right? So I worked with them with other teams with our our infrastructure, our uh, you know data center infrastructure backend, server infrastructure backend. I'd love to work with them more on the end user side of things and the Microsoft side of things. So with projects that we have coming up next year, we'll look for their expertise when it comes to, you know, Nick actually mentioned a good one, right? With the drone folks eating all of our SharePoint storage, how do we get them out of there in the right way? Let's establish the right storage solution for them and then the right migration solution for them. And so, you know, they'll they'll probably be heavily involved in in directing us the right way to move those files efficiently and safely, securely, as well as I think we touched on it in a, a prior meeting, you know, the digital experience realm, right? It may be something that Echo Store doesn't have experience in today, but 
maybe they can go off and get experience and come back and, and advise me on it after that. Mm -hmm. um, so love to have that kind of two-way partnership where it's, you know, and, and I tend to do this with folks internal that ask because Echo Store doesn't actually ask me themselves, but it's, you can ask me any question you want. If I don't have the answer, I'll go get it for you. And that's kind of the way that, you know, they're approaching that as well, right? We may not have the expertise, but we'll go get it. We'll understand the solution of what it is you want to do. And we'll find the right way to do it for you. We still have a unique size case where, you know, I mean, when Mark and I are having conversations and we can go back to the office, we can still influence, you know, decisions across the whole company based on what we're seeing here, right? So again, on that conversation, you know, the digital experience, it's not a place we really played historically, right? So we were happy to support where we could, but, you know, again, we're big on not saying no, but passing where it's not our spot, but that product now is in our NPC for evaluation, our new product council. So, you know, evaluating it and see if it's a good play. And again, if customers we trust, trust goes two ways. If customers we trust see a big value in something, we should be investing at least evaluating it. And Nick, you you were brought up in that uh, where Mark was saying, if you don't know something, you'll go and get the answer for you and for Echo Store in general. How does that work? Is that something where you will literally train up on it? Or do you have a network of partners that you would trust and go to to connect him with maybe a few of them that might have an answer? How does that how does that work out for you? What do you foresee when it comes to that sort of situation? Yep, it's exactly that. So, it's, yep. and that actually, yeah, I would have a third bucket too. So, we have, you know, the one bucket is if it's within our realm, train up, be capable, but be transparent. Like, if we're training up on something, like back to the we can't be 1.0, we can't make 1.0 here, right? But if we're going to like learn about something, that's a good place to be. And that's the easiest one. The next easier one, you know, option two is we, you know, we have our partners we work a lot with, right? ServiceNow is a great area where we have specialized partners do certain things. And, you know, we work with them as part of us governing an overall strategy, right? That's an easy way to bring in another partner. The third option, which is one I take a lot of pride in, I think a lot of people don't do this, is we have unfriendly partners. We have partners who want to take our business, but who are fantastic in certain areas. And I've told people at Eversource, like, this company is way better at that thing. You know, and, and hopefully with trust and transparency, like that partner comes in, does a great job. And, you know, hopefully they don't take our business. And if they're way better than us, then that's what happens, you know. But when, when they really need something, again, we've made those recommendations as well. And that's that's a that's a really important part of the relationship. I love that. I, I always consider the channel to be a community as much as it is a group of competitors and in a way that seems really healthy. So interesting takes on that, Nick, and thanks for sharing them. Before we wrap up here, Mark, as somebody who is dealing with a lot of opinions and seeing a lot of tech being thrown at you and seeing a lot in the news when it comes to tech trends, what are you implementing or avoiding and why? Another great question. Um, <laughs> Cobra. You know, we, we uh, <laughs> I was, I was going to dive in there. I was going to dive in there. So top of everybody's mind, right? Big buzzword for the past year has been Gen AI, right? You're looking at the chat GPTs of the world, co-pilots of the world, et cetera. We're looking at implementing something, right? And I say something because we've got a bunch of different vendors coming our way saying, we can do this, we can do that, we can integrate with these systems, et cetera, right? And everything costs money. So we definitely, I know we're weird, right? <laughs> Even energy. So we, we want to make sure we're spending our money in the right ways. So we're doing a lot of analysis now to try and understand what the right impact would be of a Gen AI product, right? Does it make more sense to put something on our customer facing website that answers questions about your bills or lets you report an outage? Does it make sense to implement something internally that allows us to create a ticket or provide some self-service options for resolution, you know, issue resolution or answer employee questions about benefits, right? There's all these different possibilities for a Gen AI type of solution that we're really evaluating a lot of them. Uh, we are probably going to avoid some of the ones that we've seen in, I'll say, public marketing because we've done certain pilots inside. And I don't know if it's good or bad to call out products, but I'll, I'll abstain from it doing is that. very good on this show. You are more than welcome to call <laughs> out products. <laughs> even, even in a negative light? Yes. Okay. So um, I would love for any type of feedback from anyone who's done this successfully, but we did run a very small pilot of co-pilot users. We had, again, it's very small, so it's not a huge use case. However, we saw not a lot of value out of it. We saw issues with it actually doing something, right? Meaning taking action. And the feedback that I've, I've given, you know, straight to the manufacturer is it can tell me all about my notes from a meeting, right? Does a great job summarizing, hey, you know, Nick said this, Katie said this, Mark said this, and, and Mark, you have these three action items. Okay, great. Go back and set a time on my calendar, find a free time on my calendar, give me 30 minutes to execute on these action items. Sorry, I can't do that. 
And it's like, okay, but you're built by the same manufacturer. You're developed together, right? Why can't you just create an appointment on my calendar? Something as simple as that, it couldn't do. It couldn't take action. So good for content creation, right? Great for note-taking and summarizing things and, and offloading that to something else, right? Incredible uh, time saver there. But that next step, kind of brought us into that Gartner trough of disillusionment, right? The hype cycle kind of, oh, well, it can't do everything we thought it could. Boy, our expectations just nosedive. So now we're looking at, you know, alternatives and looking at how easy it is to hook up alternatives to other systems, including things like Teams or ServiceNow, like Nick was saying. Again, what makes the most sense to invest our money where we're going to get the best impact out of it. So that's one of the big, big areas that we're looking at. There's a lot of players in that area now. It may not seem like it, but you search it on on LinkedIn or look through my inbox on LinkedIn and you've got no short of 15 people coming at me saying that they can help integrate with their their bot with uh, you know internal systems and everything like that. So a lot of analysis to do. My team won't personally be running it because now we have a dedicated AI team under security, which is fantastic. You know, we need that drive and that dedicated mindset um, as well as personnel. So that's a good thing that we have that now, but we'll definitely have our, our, you know, hands in that, in that jar to make sure we're having our feedback uh, heard and, and making sure we have, you know, an impact basically on everyone from paying customers to the internal employees, making it all happen behind the scenes. It's kind of funny on the on like the AI, AI side, especially like when we come to you know end users, right? Where we end up in this this space of either there's a problem, let's find a solution, or here's a solution, let's find a problem. Mm-hmm. And and neither of them's wrong because let's I mean we're looking at the art of the possible, right? We look at a solution, what could it do? But there's a lot of backwards thinking that we run into, you know. And we're trying to figure out sometimes how to make these things work. It's a it's an interesting mental exercise. And you know, one thing we're seeing too, and you know, to Mark's point, like as we're working with customers and looking at places for, hey, here's how we can scale this. Well, we don't just scale good behavior, we scale bad behavior too, right? So like I was saying before, every solution creates a new problem. There's a lot of things too that we're finding for like, you know, odd side effects of, hey, look, we scale this incredibly productive activity, suddenly we broke something else. And so, you know, as we're seeing this world go, that's where I like the crawl, walk, run theory, which is, you know, obviously very common, but like in our drone side, I like where it can be a bit contained, we can kind of grow into it. I think that's where we're going to find the most success with anything in this area. It's it's something we can kind of adopt, you know, make it our own and grow into it in a measured way. 100%. And great advice to those who are out there listening, no matter what side of the position that they're sitting on as far as being the customer, the partner, or even the vendor. So I thank you both so much for your transparency on that level. That brings us to the end of our time today, gentlemen. And before we go, I want to make sure that we're putting your names out there into the network. So for those who would like to learn more about, we'll start with Echo Store. Nick, where can people go to learn more about Echo Store? Yeah, absolutely. We're echostore.com. Um, and it's no E at the end. It's not a store like that. It's E-C-H-O-S-T-O-R. We're obviously very active on all the different social channels and social media. We have a YouTube channel now as well. But our website is just a great place to kind of aggregate things. You know, I think you'll find if you reach out to anyone from our company, you're going to have a really good response. People are really excited about this. I mean, our energy right now is off the charts. And our talent pipeline is very strong too. So everyone's just really excited about how we're growing this thing. So I think you'll find that excitement from anyone you reach out to. So I guess the real answer is, Make up a name at echostore.com. If you get lucky, you're probably talking to a good person and the right person. Corona flip flops at echostore.com. So <laughs> I'll already see that one right now. We'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be me. And for Mark, if we'd like to learn more about Eversource, potentially get our power from you, if you're my new neighbor, where can we go to learn more? Yeah. So interested in, in anything from jobs to company history to investor relations, um, eversource.com easily enough. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. It's been such, honestly, such a pleasure getting to talk to both of you about this really amazing partnership. And thank you so much. Thank you, Katie. Absolutely. Appreciate yeah, the time. Katie. Yeah, thank you so much for the time, Katie. This was awesome. And just so you know, if there's ever an outage in your area, we'll make sure the trucks are there first. We'll get the power back on. Like that's obviously something that Mark and I can control and we'll make it happen for you. Oh no, oh, yeah. send the drones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Mark and Nick for joining me today. And thank you for watching or listening. You can check out all episodes of Channel Insider Partner POV on ChannelInsider.com or watch on YouTube.com slash Channel Insider underscore news and trends. You can also listen to us on your favorite podcast listening platform. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow wherever possible so you never miss an episode. Once again, I'm Katie Bavoso and I'll see you next time.